Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Hobo back again with uh, more NFL predictions. This time, we've entered the uh, first week of the playoffs. It's the wild card round. We've got the one, two, three, four games kicking off tomorrow, Saturday, January 4th at 4.35 p.m. My lucky ass gets to spend the entire day at work, so I have to watch on the shitty little 20-inch screen halfway across the goddamn store with all these assholes trying to ask me for food. Like, get the F out of my store. I don't like it. Um, but it's going to be kicking off with the five seed Bills at the four seed Texans. Bills finished the regular season with a record of ten and six, and the Texans finished the regular season with a record of ten and six. The Texans have won four of their last five against the Bills. This matchup is fairly even. I, I think that uh, the two defenses are going to be playing really good football. J.J. Watt is back for Houston, so that's a, that's a big plus for them. Uh, obviously, he's probably going to be limited. Probably going to be on a snap count. So it's, it's just up to how much Bill O'Brien has faith in him and how much he wants to play J.J. Watt. And I don't honestly see him being a factor. The Bills offensive line has done a great job of keeping Josh Allen upright all year long. And he's, he's done some pretty good things with, with the limited amount of talent he has at receiver. And, and I mean, 10-6 and six is no record to slouch at. And, uh, you know, when you look at that division, sure, the Patriots won it, but do you really think they're the best team in the division? Ever since week, what was it, seven, they have a 4-4 four and four record. Uh, so, they, they're, I mean, they're on a completely, they're just on a, an irregular track for what we see from the Patriots every year. And, I mean, I say this and they're going to go win the Super Bowl, but, because, I mean, that's just how the shit goes. I don't know why I'm talking about the Patriots right now. Um, I, I, I've got the Texans in this game just because if they get Will Fuller back, you know, they've got Kenny Stills, DeAndre Hopkins. They can run the football. Uh, it's going to be inside. It's going to be uh, in Houston. So, the obviously, there's no weather to deal with. You get your hometown crowd involved. And, I mean, Buffalo's a young team. They've got a lot of playoff hopes ahead of them in the future. So, this just won't be it for them. It's going to be a learning experience. They're going to be able to build more on the draft and through free agency this year. They're going to get a little bit stronger. They're going to come back next year. I have the Houston Texans. Next up at 8.15 on Saturday. The Tennessee Titans, the sixth seed at 9 and 7, take on the three seed Patriots at 12 and 4. The game you are watching me play right at this very second. Uh, the Patriots are 9 and 0 in home playoff games since the year 2013. So that does not bode well for the red hot Tennessee Titans. And I mean, it, I, I just saw a stat. It's Ryan Tannehill. His past seven, uh, or his seven best touchdown. What am I trying to say? His seven best performances as a quarterback statistically have all uh, out, of, out of the seven, four of them have come at, at this year. Something like that. Uh, so basically he's playing the best football of his career right now at the end of the season with Tennessee. So, he, I mean, and he's got a, a long road to climb against this uh, New England defense that has preyed on bad offense. Uh you know, I was at the game. They played against the Jets, and, and Sam Darnold saw a ghost on Monday night. It was honestly one of the most pathetic things I've ever seen in my life. And I don't think the Patriots are really that great. I just don't see their defense as, a, as a, an elite defense. I mean, sure, I've got a lot of respect for Stephon Gilmore. I think he's an incredible athlete, great cornerback. But he's got his hands full with guys like A.J. Brown. And I know A.J. is just a rookie, but... They've, they've got some talent, and they have a legitimate shot to win this football game. And New England has to score points to be able to win this game. And I just don't see Tom Brady being able to throw for 450 yards and, and three or four touchdowns anymore. I just think that, that era of his game has, has passed him by. And I'm, I'm a firm disbeliever in this whole Tom Brady has no help argument because I think that's complete and utter bull shit he's got uh, he's, he's got Edelman he's got what's his face there Sanu the the kid to kill Harry he's got weapons and and people just like to lean on that as a crutch because he doesn't have Gronk like <laughs> people need to freaking pop their brains back into their heads because this offense should not be as bad as it is but Tom Brady has not looked as good as he normally does with all that being said you might think I'm going to pick Tennessee, but I'm just, I can't bet against Tom Brady. As much as I want to, I'm not going to. Then on Sunday, at 105, the Vikings, the 6th seed at 10-6, and six, will take on the 3-seed Saints at 13-3. and three. 
So the Saints and Vikings, they get a little rematch of the Minneapolis Miracle. The Saints are 6-1 and one in home playoff games in the Sean Payton era. So all seems to be pointing in the direction of the Saints. I mean, they're going to be playing hard to avenge their loss from a few years ago in the Minneapolis Miracle. That game cost them an NFC Championship spot, and it gave the Philadelphia Eagles a Super Bowl win. So nobody wants to talk about that. Not even Eagles fans who are back in the playoffs this year, and they're going to get eliminated, and I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. But the Saints, they've got a lot to play for. The Vikings, I don't trust Kirk Cousins. I think he's a mediocre at best quarterback. Uh, I don't even think he's the second best quarterback in his division. I still feel Matt Stafford is the second best quarterback in the entire NFC North. But uh, what do I know, right? They finished three and whatever the hell. But I'm going to take the Saints in this game. I just think they are way more talented offensively and defensively. And I'm not saying the Vikings have no shot, but I'm saying the Vikings are not going to win. And those are two different things. Believe you me, I know that to be a fact. And I just overthrew the fake punt. So the final game of Wild Card Weekend will be the Seahawks, the five seed at 11 and five, visiting the nine and seven Philadelphia Eagles. Let, let's get this out of the way before it bothers me for the rest of my life. How do the 11 and five uh, Seattle Seahawks travel to the nine and seven Eagles for a playoff game? I don't. I just don't understand. I don't get it. it I think it's it's terrible. It, the, the playoff structure in the NFL is so utterly insane, where you can have a nine and seven team host a playoff game. And and I have people that tell me that oh the wild card round isn't playoff. It's one hundred percent playoff. It's a playoff game, god damn it. And the fact that the nine and seven Eagles get to host a playoff game is a travesty. It's a joke, and frankly, the NFL should be ashamed that the NFC East even sends teams to the playoffs. That's besides the point. Seahawks are going to run wild. I mean, it's a it's a great matchup, and um, honestly, even with all the injuries to uh, Philadelphia, scheme-wise, when, when you look at the way these two teams play each other, it's a great matchup. And I don't necessarily have a ton of faith in uh, Carson Wentz because this will be his first playoff start, so I, I, I don't have anything to go off on him. But Russell Wilson's a Super Bowl champ, and he's been playing pretty good football. And I know the Seahawks haven't had the, the most spectacular-looking year. With all of their victories coming in one-possession games, you can't really say, well, they're an offense that can beat the brakes off you, or they're a defense that can shut you down and lock you out. That I think you, we hold those titles and reserve them for the 49ers and for the Ravens. But um, and, and we'll get to see them next week. But Seattle's still a strong team, and they're definitely strong enough to beat the winner of the NFC East. And if, if a team in this playoff can't beat the Philadelphia Eagles, they don't deserve to be here. And, and I mean, that should just be plain fact to anybody who has ever seen a football game in their life. But, um, yeah, there you have it. The wild card round summed up in about uh, five minutes, maybe? Five minutes flat. We're going to call it five minutes. Uh, probably wrong, but that's my guess. My final guess and my only guess. I will catch you guys next week. Make sure to enjoy some football tomorrow and on Sunday. Uh, don't get too wasted. We uh, we don't want that to happen. And if you do, get a get a DD. But it ain't gonna be me because I don't have a driver's license. I will catch you guys next week for the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. It's gonna do it for me, boy Hobo. We'll see you guys next time.